In this video, I'm going to tackle a subscriber request for how to make fake vines. So whether you're trying to escape the Temple of Doom or create a patch for the Great Pumpkin, you'll want to stick around. To get started, we'll need some foam backer rod and some pattern-free paper towels, since any patterns or embossing in the towel will show up in our final piece. Determine the length of vine that you'll need and double it. Then you'll want to twist it on itself to create a simple braid. Once you've got it braided, apply heat with a heat gun to help the backer rod keep that shape. Don't get the backer rod too close to the heat gun or your foam will melt. This step happens pretty quickly, so if you have a long length of vine to create, you'll want to do this with a partner. When your backer rod is holding its braid, set it aside and grab your paper towels. The paper towels will give our vines some much needed texture, but we'll need to remove the sharp edges to help them blend together when placing them on our backer rod. We'll also tear them into three pieces or in widths to match the circumference of your braid. Now that we have our paper towel pieces prepped, we'll wet them down with water to help them absorb the glue better. You really want them to be soaked through, much more than I've done here. For this project, I'm using Mod Podge, although you could use PVA or white school glue if that's what you have on hand. Pour some of the Mod Podge out onto the paper towel and brush it across the entire surface with a chip brush, paying special attention to the edges since we want the towel to adhere to itself once it's wrapped around the backer rod. Next, we'll start wrapping the towel around the backer rod lengthwise. This can be a little tricky, but I found that if you work in a consistent direction and overlap your pieces, you'll get a more desirable appearance. You can use an alternating twisting motion with your hands to smooth them in place. Think of it like wringing out a wet towel. If you find that some of your edges aren't staying down, apply extra glue and work it into the paper towel to get a better bond. The paper towel will naturally have some folds and textures with this application, but you'll really want to try and create as much as possible since it will give the vine more character and make our paint stand out better. Repeat this step for the entire length of your vine and set it aside. If you're making jungle vines, grab some extra length of paper towel, apply your glue and then twist it to make some smaller vines. It's important to break up your vines visually by adding in alternating sizes so that our eyes don't notice the consistent shapes. Apply these smaller vines to your larger vine and set them aside to dry. Now that our vine is dry, we can move on to paint. The color of your vine depends on how you're using it. I'm going a bit more Indiana Jones with this one, so I chose a dark brown. But if it were for a pumpkin patch, you'd want to base coat your vine with a medium green. When the base color is dry, I'll use Folk Arts Faded Jade and we'll do a heavy dry brushing over the entire vine. I say heavy because in this case I want our darker color to look more like an accent, and the lighter color to be more dominant. Much like the base color, 
This lighter color is up to you based on how you'll use the vines. Once I'm happy with the application, I'll add in a bit of faux ivy with some hot glue to help break up the look of the vine a bit more. If you can't find ivy, you could use anything from raffia to sphagnum moss to help add a bit more interest. Well, as you can see with some common items, you can make some pretty realistic looking vines. That's going to do it for this one. Comment down below to let me know how you'd use this technique. And of course, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Until next time, go make something.